Hello, Mary the Psychic Shaman here, and today is a Shaman Saturday. So, I had a great idea from Lisa yesterday, um, which I'm, it's not quite what I'm doing, involving drumming. But I figured I would let you guys know what tools that I use the most as a shaman for my shamanic practice. What do I use the most? So, of course, we've got the drum and the rattle and Florida water and that kind of stuff. But I figured I would just uh, explain some of those items and maybe tell you how I use them. So, the first thing that I use probably the most is Florida water. And this is done I, when I'm opening sacred space. I spit it. <coughs> Which, I'm not the best spitter, but I still do it. Some people are amazing and they can get this. And it's like just tiny little droplets. But I use this as an offering as I'm opening sacred space. I also use it while I'm doing healing sessions on people. Um, it clears out, it helps to clear out negativity, heavy energies. I do have it in a spray bottle as well. Um, it doesn't have to be this. If you do go with the Agua de Florida from Peru, make sure it is this one and not the green one. Um, you can, I buy these off Amazon. Uh, some, I mean, I think you can actually buy these from Walgreens and CVS and stuff too. Um, I also, from uh, the woman who I was trained with, um, she's got her own. So she makes her own Florida water, which hopefully one of these days I will be doing myself as well. So Florida water is something I use all the time. Um, I do, when I'm opening sacred space, a lot of times I will use my um, wand here that I made. Very powerful. Um, I infused it with some of the stones that I used were from a grid. Um, uh, I think a new moon grid that I had made. It's been a while. And <clears throat> so I have this. Now this can also be used, you know, as I'm opening sacred space because it kind of makes some noise here. But this I use, and um, it's really a focusing your energy with the stone there. Use a rattle, and I've got all kinds of rattles, which are different sounds. This one I use probably the most often. I've got this. This one is a beautiful one with a beautiful moon and wolf on it. Now, this... These are used for, oh, I got a little guy too, little thing. This one, when I travel and stuff, I put this one in my mesa. So this is a traveling one. But what, with these rattles, not only can you open sacred space, but during healing, I use this to help move energy as well. So the vibration is helps, um, and also to open and close up chakras and energy centers. So that's for that. The drum, of course. Drumming is, I use mostly for healing sessions because it is such a, it vibrates. It vibrates so much that I cannot um, record my guided journeys in this room because I, well, I have glass. <laughs> I have glass. So it actually starts vibrating anything that's in the room. So when I record my guided journeys, I have to do it out in our bedroom or somewhere where it's a larger area. And I still have to close this door. Um, so, this is Buffalo, my drum, and I can, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can already hear the vibrations, but because I'm using a microphone, you may not be able to, but everything is vibrating already. So this, that you are, you should be feeling the vibrations coming through. about your chakras, um, you know, and your meridians and that. Think of it as your circulatory system. Same type of idea, but it's energy instead of blood. And that can get stagnant and stuck. You know, just like we can get clogged arteries. Uh, same thing can happen with energy. And when we do this, you know, I do this over people while I'm doing energies, even long distance or doing healings, long distance, is it's breaking that energy up with the vibrations. And it is amazing. I also use drumming for guided journeys because it just helps. Just something with that is a way that helps you get into an altered state. 
um, that is that drum. I have an amazing drum. I forget the name of it. It is, uh, I believe, over from Africa is where these originate from. It was my brother's, and it is a tall, tall one. Oh, this is goat, I believe. It is this, which is beautiful, but it's different. It has a different sound. A little different to use. So that I have just because, well, it's my brother's and I will always have it since he passed away. And it's just a good reminder of the beautiful soul that he is and was while here. Um, so we've got rattles. We've got my wand, Florida water, drum, um, sage. This is sage, Black Hills sage, uh, which this one is really pretty. Uh, it's a different a um, little sweeter than the normal white sage. Uh, white sage I do use a lot uh, for clearing space um, and during my hair is everywhere <laughs> and during healing sessions. Uh, sage can also help to, you know, release some of that stagnant energy. So I will burn this. Um, this is, I take a piece off, this kind of take a piece off, lick my palm and roll it into a ball and then I light it. Um, that stuff smells much better. For some reason, my husband doesn't like it, though. I don't know why I like it better, but um, let's see. What else do we have? Different incense. Um, try not to use this too much because they are going, starting to be over um, harvested. Uh, frankincense, resin I use. Um, a lot of that more is, too, for clearing home spaces out versus human spaces. <laughs> I use sage for clearing out your own space. Uh, sweetgrass. I love sweetgrass. I know I'm in your face, but sweetgrass helping to bring in the positive energy and your beautiful guides and angels. Oh, crystals. What do I use for healing? For extracting, when I have to extract a crystallization, I will use this double terminated quartz. That was during healing sessions. Um, now, when I do healing sessions, um, either you do muscle testing with people to see which chakra is most affected, uh, which is really just, you know, having them raise their hand and, you know, see if the muscle test that way, tell them to, you know, hold their hand while you push down. But now, since I do a lot of long distance healing, I cannot do that. So instead, I use pendulums. So I have two that I made. Um, depending on which one I'm called to. A lot of times I will use this one, which is uh, a little bit of controversy when I posted this on a bigger site and said, what do you you know, guys think? Because it is um, made from a rosary. Um, I think it's beautiful though. Amethyst, part of the rosary and an angel. I took for this, I took some kind of negative energy from a past family member. Uh, this was hers. And I changed it and I made it beautiful. So that part I like. Oh, let's see. What else do we have? What else do I use for my practices? Of course, you guys know I use tarot cards, but that's not related to shamanism. Um, I just do that because I like it. Um, I do use incense a lot. Uh, regular incense. I love patchouli. Uh, but I think drumming... Drumming is something that is just beautiful. Um, it is just, just amazing for, for us. And if you guys, where did I lose my drumstick? There it is. If you guys are interested in uh, starting to journey or doing helping with meditations, Michael Harner has uh, a free on YouTube, a 15 minute and a 30 minute um, video, which is just the sound. And there's certain, when you do this for journeying, there's a certain beat and stance that you, helps you get into that altered state. And at the end, when it is time for you to come back, you can call back. So that is part of it, but otherwise for, for the whole 15 or, you know, 15 is easier than 30 is pretty extensive. It's just getting into the beat and traveling, journeying. So, 
those are some of the tools tools most used um, daily florida water incense i love um and uh my wand and rattle uh rattle i use a lot rattle and wand for opening sacred space uh oh bell sometimes i use a bell this is a beautiful sound too this i use for healing as well sometimes for opening sacred space and i think that's about it so we've got all kinds of fun tools and you know one thing to note that none of it is necessary it does help and as a practitioner of course when you know i'm doing healing sessions i'm not taking on all of the work i am calling out and asking for help you know from my own guides from my patients or clients guides um calling in help from the archetypes odorongo is one that i always have helped me you know she helps to find that which doesn't want to be found you know too things that, to bring up uh amaru the serpent you know i call in help of our ancestors you know both mine and of um you know my clients i call in the lineage of healers that i am now connected with um, to help so it's not just me um, now am i exhausted at the end of a healing sometimes yeah i'm energized too though so it's a different you know you're not taking on you're like a conduit but you also are putting some of your own into it as well so i'm still using a lot of my intuition obviously to pull in all the messages all the visions i'm getting and the messages i'm getting from all of the helpers that are around when i'm doing these healing sessions this still is draining you know even when i do a reading when i do you know my readings in compass um doing you know first i do a journey on my client's behalf and then i do a tarot reading well that journey is beautiful and it's not too bad it's but it's still it, it takes a little bit you know of its toll so there's a lot of um, self-help type of stuff that needs to be done too I need to do my own self-healing um, as you know when you take on you're taking on a lot of different energies moving them you know even though you have helpers you know being a practitioner you have all the spiritual helpers that are helping you but you still are running through even if you're just a conduit think about all everything that's running right through you and out so even for reiki you know you're pulling in that universal reiki energy you're a conduit to go out so you should be getting reiki as well but as much as everyone wants to say that you should be energized and not exhausted at all i just don't believe it <laughs> even with reiki because you are still the conduit and still being used so as now I got off topic there I apologize so for all all the fun shaman tools that are used um, there are a lot more um, I do have not done ayahuasca um, or peyote uh, you know I for mind altering drugs that it helps tremendously for some people people go to Peru just for the ayahuasca and they have some amazing journeys with it um, you know i don't believe i need that because i can do amazing journeys without mind altering substances but i have no issue with people who do um you know there and i don't think there's an issue with um you know consuming like i don't think you have to be completely clean you know i have a drink i don't have an issue with that i don't have an issue with people who smoke pot or you know that kind of thing i do have an issue however with those that are drinking and doing drugs and then working on clients that's a no-no for me big no-no so and off topic again so there's our shaman saturday uh if you have any questions for me please let me know otherwise have a good one see you guys later <laughs>